Hey guys, Sun here. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. One of you reached out on YouTube with a very interesting question. How can one back up data for a very long amount of time? Uh, so something that a lot of people don't know is that spinning hard drives, solid state hard drives, and even flash devices such as SD cards or USB thumb drives, all of those are not designed to keep data on them for very long amounts of time. It's perfectly fine for a year or two, but as long as if you're thinking about this and through the lens of like 50 years, 100 years, chances are that those devices will be subject to something called bit rot, meaning parts of that data will have become corrupted. And if it so happens that that part is, for instance, encryption headers for a key pass backup, well, then it's a huge deal. Uh, thankfully, a lot of encryption systems will copy headers at the beginning and the end of the file, taking bit rot into consideration. But nonetheless, it's something to keep in mind. Now, my gut feeling is that all providers that provide uh, very high data persistence, whoa, very high data persistence, sorry, over long amount of time, what they're really doing is that they're uh, running clusters of hard drives, spinning hard drives likely because they're very cost effective, and they're replicating the information from one to the other on a regular basis. So as long as the information is rewritten, the information stays fresh, and it's possible to use SHA checksums, for instance, or any other checksum algorithm to validate the integrity of files. And that is what very sophisticated uh, data solutions do. Uh, now, if you're just someone like you and I, and you don't have like thousands to put into data storage, what I would recommend doing is what I'm actually doing right now. So I am using this guide, how to back up and encrypt data using rsync and Veracrypt. That is what I'm using, and here's why it actually kind of solves this problem if, and only if, one has access to the backup on a sort of regular basis. So for a password manager, uh, I would recommend backing up the data on a regular basis. The cool thing with rsync and the way it's configured here is it will actually keep all versions of the file, so the uh, you know backup of the password manager, for example, it will keep all versions up to, I believe, three months or something by default. Uh, and that is user configurable. And that means that unless both encryption headers, so like, you know, the one at the beginning of the file and the one at the end, unless both are screwed, uh, it's a, it's very unlikely that data will become corrupt. And now the other cool thing with Veracrypt is in the end, a Veracrypt volume is essentially a file. So that file can be very easily copied to volumes, you know, from one volume to another. And usually these kind of very critical backups keys those backups are small in size. So what I do is I actually run my backups on a keychain uh, USB thumb drive such as this. This is a Samsung bar. And then when I go running, I want to have this on a much lighter little device. So I use essentially memory cards that usually are used in cameras. That's what I'm recording on right now. So those memory cards and this USB thumb drive, they're both waterproof and they're amazing. So what I do is when I go running, Every now and then I'll sync using another little piece of code. I'll sync the data from this to this. And since the uh, the checksum of the backup will change every time a file is written to the Veracrypt volume, well, each time I synchronize it, a fresh version will be stored on the SD card. Now, I also have two other of those that are geo dispersed so that if ever my whole house catches fire or something, I can go to another location and access one of those backups. So essentially by doing that, uh, I'm pretty much covered in the context of bit rot unless like, well, actually I'm, I don't see how that could, could fail. Uh, now that said, that, do, uh, th that solution does imply that I have access to the backup material on a regular basis and that I'm creating backups. Maybe your question was, how can I back up a small piece of very sensitive information for an extremely long amount of time. Now that makes me think about how to uh, save, for instance, a Bitcoin mnemonic for a long amount of time. And as you guys would likely know, paper backups are the best approach to this because if it's on a piece of paper, you're cool. Now you might not be able to encrypt, you know, the actual password file uh, or the key pass dump on, uh, you know, on paper because it would be a huge amount of data on paper, but uh, I did come up with a solution that I'll be showing to you guys in the context of the Bitcoin series. So what I have here 
is a little Raspberry Pi that I developed. It's, a, it's essentially a bunch of scripts to automate what I'm going to show you guys now. And I'll be talking about this in much greater detail shortly in the Bitcoin series. But what I'm doing right here is I typed qrbackup.sh, enter. Now it asks me if I want to format this little memory card, which I say yes. And then, uh, by the way, the password is Raspberry. That's a default Raspberry Pi password. So what's happening now, oh, let me switch to my other screen here. What's happening now is uh, it is asking me to type a secret. Not sure if this will focus properly, uh, but let's say I'm typing a secret. That could be, you know, a few of those passwords in uh, KeePass. For now, I'm just gonna write foo and then control D and then again, foo enter control D. And now it's asking me to enter a passphrase. So this system will generate encrypted paper backups using 256 AES, so it's military grade. So I'm just gonna enter a really shitty password here since you're seeing this on camera. And then what is happening here? Oh yeah, sorry, it's asking me if I wanna see the passphrase so I can say yes to make sure that the passphrase here is actually what I thought it was. And then it is encrypting the secret uh, using AES-256 and it will allow me to see a SHA checksum uh, through a QR code of the encrypted payload. So that's kind of hard to see on the overhead camera, but essentially I can scan this and store the value of this QR code in my password manager and that will allow me to confirm the integrity of the paper backup. So once this is done, if I press Q, uh, it says that everything is done here and I can now take this memory card and I'm pretty excited to show this. This will be again explained in much more detail during the Bitcoin series, but I have this really nice little printer here. It's a Canon Selfie CP1300 and it has this really cool property that it runs off a battery if one wants. It can also run off power. And what this allows me to do is move data from this. By the way, what's on this USB thumb drive right now is a, a JPEG of, or maybe a PNG, not sure, of the uh, encrypted payload. So this is not like a huge security vulnerability, although we can secure erase it with the Raspberry Pi later. So if I plug in it, if I plug it in here, uh, what I can then do, uh, I'm not sure if you guys will see this on the overhead camera, I guess, ooh, kinda. Uh, I can then go about focusing, uh, sorry, here, cropping this image a little better. This is designed for like selfies actually, but it's quite quite nice for this kind of uh, use case. So once this is done, I can go about printing this. And now the cool thing is this is totally air gap. So I'm not sending this over Bluetooth or over Wi-Fi. It's reading it off the USB uh, memory card here. And I'm pretty sure that it's not being stored on the device itself, but again, what I'm printing is an encrypted version of the secret. This is how I approach very long-term storage of sensitive information. And I will be talking about this in the context of storing Bitcoin mnemonics. Uh, that said, what's cool about this, and I'll show you in a second, is this is printed on paper that will likely last 100 years. If this is stored, in a dry location, for instance, within a book, and it is stored uh, without access to direct light, I am sure the pigment on this will last essentially forever. So what we can see right here, this is an encrypted QR code that includes our secret. Now, the more data we put into the QR code, the bigger it gets, and there is a limit. Uh, but, I mean, it's totally possible to develop an app that would be able to uh, iterate through a whole bunch of QR codes, and that's pretty cool. By the way, this Raspberry Pi system here is capable of doing also uh, Shamir secret sharing, so it's super cool. And when this is done, you actually have a whole bunch of QR codes that are you know generated and printed. So hopefully that's uh, insightful in the context of how to store backups properly and how to make sure that they persist over time, and why uh, I believe the best solution to this problem is actually totally non-technical. So yeah, I'll see you soon in the Bitcoin series. Bye. Hey guys, Son of the Future here. I completely forgot to mention that I do offer consulting services. So if you have a company and you need help with very sensitive data, or if you're into Bitcoin, for instance, and you wanna make sure that your children will inherit from your holding, I can help with that. Get in touch.